as the Insider Exclusive Investigative News Team travels across America producing the Justice in America Network TV series, we invite you to join us as we uncover real stories about the issues that promote justice and fairness for injured people, safeguards victims' rights, and the opportunity to help guide the hands of justice, especially when people's lives have been destroyed, families ruined, dreams lost, or widespread societal change and reform are needed. These true stories about real, ordinary people, their real lives, always up close and personal, and always unfiltered stories of unimaginable pain, suffering, and great wrongs, but also of courage and faith and the dauntlessness of the human spirit. These stories are also about the trial lawyers who helped these ordinary people navigate a very complex legal system to get justice as they faced extreme life-altering adversities and how the government and big business with their million-dollar PR campaigns are slowly eroding our rights to seek justice and making an end run around the civil justice system. Our TV stories show relief and vindication for shattered lives and seemingly lost souls. The compassion, warmth, love, and determination of the human spirit found within these shows are neither imagined nor contrived. They are truly personal crusades and telling journeys of what it means to seek justice in the American courtroom. In this insider-exclusive network TV special, Justice in America, The Truths and Myths of Tort Reform, we visit with Mark Mueller, founder of Mueller Law, PLLC as he takes us inside today's legal system, examining lawyers' strategies, clients' thoughts, and in vivid detail, showing you the often heartbreaking stories of these clients, dramatically demonstrating what motivates trial lawyers to fight for their clients' causes. Some of these same trial lawyers have been in the crosshairs of attacks by so-called tort reform advocates for the past 30 years. These attacks are not new. Now, a lot of you have heard and read about tort reform, but really don't understand how or what it really means, or how it affects us negatively every time we walk into the courtroom. So in this special Network TV Insider exclusive documentary, Justice in America, The Truths and Myths of Tort Reform, we will show you how tort reform is making justice more and more difficult for the average American. And we're not going to do it by words or fancy language, but by inviting you along to meet our guests and their lawyers in small towns and big cities filmed across America, who've had the unfortunate bad luck to be severely injured or victimized by big businesses, the government, or law enforcement. These victims could be you or me one day, and if you are so unlucky, you will quickly find out that justice in America is a hard-won battle where very few companies and individuals do the right thing, and you need trial warriors who wage a battle with their own financial resources to get their clients justice. But before we get started, just for the record, let's define what the heck tort reform means in simple language. Tort is a legal term describing the system of compensation used by the courts to assign remedies, awards, and damages for harm done by one party to another, be it to their person, property, or other protected interest. Tort law defines what constitutes a legal injury and establishes liability. It's the civil court's answer to criminal law. Tort reform, then, is the political term for the controversial issue of reducing tort litigation, awards, damages, and or compensation. Now, tort reform isn't one single idea or law. Instead, it's a group of ideas and laws designed to change the way our civil justice system works. While each tort reform law is different, they all share one or more of the following goals. To make it more difficult for injured people to file a lawsuit, to make it more difficult for injured people to obtain a jury trial, and to put limits on the amount of money injured people receive in a lawsuit. Keep in mind that throughout history, our civil justice system has kept Americans safe by allowing them a fair chance to receive justice when they are injured by the negligence of others, even when it means taking on the most powerful corporations. When corporations and their CEOs act irresponsibly by cutting corners on safety, producing unsafe products, polluting our environment, or swindling their employees and shareholders, the last resort to hold them accountable is in our courts. The legal system provides justice to those injured by deliberate misconduct and deters future misconduct by holding wrongdoers accountable. 
Here's just a quick review of a few Justice in America Network TV show segments of these real case stories of ordinary people, their real lives, and their trial lawyers who help these ordinary folks navigate a very complex legal system to get justice as they faced extreme life-altering adversities. Real cases that promote justice and fairness for injured people safeguards victims' rights and the opportunity to help guide the hands of justice. Especially when people's lives have been destroyed, families ruined, dreams lost, or widespread societal change and reform are needed. And how the government and big business are slowly eroding our rights to seek justice, making an end run around the civil justice system and calling it tort reform. For many of the nearly 50,000 9-11 first responders, the wounds of the Twin Tower attacks are far from healing. These rescue workers continue to struggle with respiratory illness, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, and many of them may be at increased risk for developing a number of cancers. Because they and their fellow rescue workers were picking through rubble littered with asbestos, mercury, crushed fluorescent light bulbs, and other known toxins, and they were outfitted with only their normal uniform to protect them from potential contaminants. When hundreds of victims and their families were left struggling with impending health problems and emotional instabilities after the World Trade Center attacks, the Uniform Firefighters Association of Greater New York selected one law firm, Sullivan, Papain, Block, McGrath, and Canavo, their friends and trusted legal advisors for the past 20 years, to come to their rescue. Because sometimes, even first responders need to be saved. I was promised a better life. Far away from my home. I used to have a family. Now, I must pay for my family's debts. I sleep with many men every day. They make me kill for a war. Work many long hours. Trapped. Beaten. Scared. Locked in the dark. With no way out. I want to go home. I want my freedom. 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 The last thing that we as Americans would, would remotely suspect is that the greatest engineering firm in the world, so named because they were able to build a Panama Canal when no one else could, the greatest engineering firm in the world caused, caused the flooding of this city. Not Hurricane Katrina, the United States Army Corps of Engineers.
and because of one negligent moment, it has become a painful and needless tragedy. The state of Louisiana's medical malpractice laws are full of traps and how the healthcare and insurance industries are far more protected than anywhere else. In Sharon Boxy's case, you will see how her doctors malpositioned her head and neck during surgery that substantially reduced blood flow through the carotid arteries to her brain causing massive brain damage which went undetected during surgery and rendered her a total quadriplegic. So far in 34 years, no one has come close to having a Supreme Court decision yeah. finding that the cap or the act was unconstitutional. Um, we are going to show right now uh, a day in the life of Sharon Boxy and what these doctors did to her. And you're quite familiar with this video that we have on the screen right now. Tell us a little bit about her daily activities. Well, her daily activities are markedly reduced. Her sister and her family have, have been incredibly supportive, uh, caring for her and doing the physical therapy and the other um, steps that are necessary to keep her alive and, and functioning as well as she possibly could. But basically in the course of a day, uh, because of her limitations, she can do virtually nothing other than watch TV, talk with people yeah. who come over, uh, maybe read a little bit, but even read, I mean, she can't turn a page. She has no movement in her hands or arms or legs. Don mentioned to me, Sharon, that one of the reasons that you have so much drive and fortitude is you want to show others that the laws in the state of Louisiana aren't the best laws in the world concerning medical malpractice cases, right? That is correct. On July 26, 2003, at approximately 3.45 in the afternoon, Christopher Allison and his family were driving back to Pocatello, Idaho from their vacation in Washington. Suddenly and unexpectedly, their vehicle was struck by another driver from the rear, jackknifing their camper and overturning their Ford Expedition, crushing and killing Christopher and injuring the rest of the Allison family. Today, the Insider Exclusive will show you how the Allison's lawyers, Robert Krauss 
and Emily Rankin of the Spence Law Firm took on Ford Motor Company and successfully sued them for the defective product design of the door latch and component system and other defects and got justice for the Allison family. My name is Jeffrey Scott Hornoff and I'm a police officer. I was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Every step of the judicial system failed me and my family. And if not for the guilt and remorse of the true killer, I'd still be in prison. She died, I killed her. Why would you not want to ensure that California stops putting innocent people in prison? It's a very good question. I was locked up when I was 20 years old, just turned 20 years old. And I'm 42 now, so I've been in a little over 22 years. It was hard for my father to explain to me. I got convicted of raping somebody, but daddy didn't do it. So it was like, how you not do it, daddy? You've been in here for all these years now. Everything in life is wonderful, and then one day, somebody comes up and tells a lie on you, and you end up in jail. What's different is he knows fear doesn't exist. When they told me rape, robbery, that's an instrument of crime, a gun, a conspiracy, all these, I'm like, oh my God, you know, just, it's almost like 100 years in jail for something you didn't do, and I'm, I'm really scared. I was in shock because I got found guilty. I looked him right in the face, and I said, you and I both know I didn't kill anyone. And he couldn't look me in the eye. He sentenced me to all that time, and I didn't know what to expect in prison. You know, I expected to uh, be beaten, be raped. I expected to die in prison. The government has failed the exonerated. It's finally over. It's been 19 years. What now? Go home. Dr. William J. Irwin failed to comply with the appropriate standard of care for an OBGYN in the year 2007. And as a result, Rebecca Gatti, a newborn baby, suffered severe brain damage, which is lifelong and irreversible. Those brutally frank words were how the Louisiana Medical Review Board explained to Ryan and Susan Gatti the parents of their new baby girl, Rebecca, why Rebecca had suffered irreversible brain damage due to the incompetence of Dr. Irwin, and now will require round-the-clock care for the rest of her life with no chance whatsoever for improvement. Today, the Insider Exclusive will take you behind the headlines of this real-life couple, Ryan and Susan Gaddy, who entrusted their child's health and welfare to this grossly incompetent doctor. Following is a TV commercial for American Family Insurance. Since the dawn of time, people have needed people. The personal connection, 
the shoulder to lean on. That is our role. To deliver more than just a policy on a piece of paper. To deliver peace of mind. Because we are family. American family. And like family, we grow stronger each day with the constant promise to always be fair, helpful, and caring. Doing whatever we can to make things easier. Striving to keep our promises. This is what we do for our clients. We get to know them like family. Because that's who we are. American Family Insurance. But today, the Insider Exclusive presents a true, really tragic story, one that American Family Insurance doesn't want you to know. One hot Missouri summer day, Galen Ritchie's sister, Brenda, called her insurance company, American Family, and her agent, Catherine Philip Leitz, telling her that a 1,400 pound tree limb, nearly half the tree, had fallen on Brenda's house. She called three times that week, and on three separate occasions, American Family refused to pay to have this 1,400 pound limb removed. If you don't care about people, you couldn't do this job. Sounds real good, doesn't it? Only problem is, Anthem Blue Cross really doesn't mean what they say. Ask Bob Daringer, widow of Esther Daringer. 49-year-old Esther beat breast cancer until it metastasized to her brain. Ohio State University physician Dr. Herbert Newton, her physician, had successfully treated cancer like Esther's through intra-arterial chemotherapy. Her husband's health insurer, Anthem Blue Cross, paid for three of the 12 scheduled treatments. Bob and Esther first learned that the fourth treatment was being denied the day before it was given. The insurance company had approved the first three of the 12 treatments, but then refused further payment, declaring the procedure experimental. Cigarette smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. It causes serious illness among an estimated 8.6 million persons. It costs 167 billion in annual health-related losses, and it kills approximately 438,000 people each year. Worldwide, smoking kills nearly 5 million people annually. to stand here today with dedicated colleagues from within the Department of Justice as well as beyond it to announce a historic settlement with Pfizer Incorporated 
In a combination civil and criminal settlement, Pfizer has agreed to pay $2.3 billion, the largest health care fraud settlement in the history of the Department of Justice. You now know that exposure to asbestos products caused this. Yes. Not only in the Navy, but also working as a custodian at the school. Yes. You're on national TV now. What do you have to say to the manufacturers that created these products? Well, they knew years ago, and they should have started much earlier in the, uh, in the process of eliminating the asbestos from all their products. Mm -hmm. Um, they chose not to, you know that. They chose not to. Uh, most of the major companies, uh, some that were, um, that were litigated against, uh, filed bankruptcy and then turned around and regrouped and they were doing the exact same thing. They were going strong. Using the same, uh, same products. Yeah, they have a total disregard for human life, don't mm -hmm. they? Mark? They do. being a correction officer and I chose that field because I wanted to make a positive impact on um, inmates. I view my prognosis as good. I, I keep responding to treatment and I was just talking to my sister yesterday because there's times where you get down and you think, oh, you know, you just want to give up. Uh, cannot operate with one hand. Dr. Anthony Sterling is an orthopedic surgeon who can no longer take care of his patients. He's been disabled ever since 1998 when he had surgery to remove a bone spur pressing on his spinal cord. The surgery did not turn out well. The worst thing that could happen to a surgeon happened to Dr. Sterling. During the surgery, he suffered a terrible injury that rendered his left arm completely paralyzed, and it remains paralyzed to this day, trapped in an ugly brace. So the man who routinely performed about 500 surgeries a year and expected to continue helping patients for another 15 years can no longer enter an operating room. Across the U.S., people are rising up against fracking for natural gas. A deadly threat to our homes and our lives is looming on the horizon. It is a new technique of gas oil extraction. It is known by various names, for example. The oil and gas industry says it isn't new. The industry says it's safe. 
But the industry is lying. The vertical gas wells are a completely different technology. The new technique of deep horizontal fracking destroys drinking water supplies, pollutes our air and our environments, and will continue to do so for possibly hundreds of years as the well casings inevitably fail and disposal sites inevitably leak. In this insider exclusive investigative TV series new documentary, Fracking, Dangerous Contamination, Bob and Lisa Parr's story, our news team found that in any area where fracking operations have happened, the local people have been outraged by the catastrophic damage to land, water supplies, air quality, animal and human health. Local economies have been destroyed, property values have fallen drastically up to 90%. And one of those areas is in Wise County, Texas, where the Barnett Shale is located. This is where we begin our story with Bob and Lisa Parr at their ranch and with their lawyer, Brad Gildy of the Gildy Law Firm. leaving only enough time, three seconds, for Clay Rush to possibly kick the game winner. Rush has made field goals of 20 and 26 yards, missed from 41. This one will be from 20 yards to win the Arena Bowl. When I think about football when I was playing, um, I like the challenges that it presented itself. You had to be physically fit. You had to be mentally fit. What's unique about arena football, I miss the fans. Um, it's a close-knit group. We consider us as a family. I've had over 30 procedures done with the head and neck. I've been on 90 different medications. I don't know what it's like not to have a headache. question you were here in July and you said that you were um, you commended Dodd-Frank for providing a blueprint mm -hmm. to get rid of too big to fail we've now understood this problem for nearly five years so when are we going to get rid of too big to fail well some of the you know as, as, you, as we've been discussing you know some of these rules take time to develop um, uh, the Orderly Liquidation Authority, I think we made a lot of progress on that. We've got the living wills. I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, if additional steps are needed, then Congress obviously can discuss those, but we do have a plan and I think it's moving in the right direction. Any idea about when we're going to arrive in the right direction? <laughs> it's, it's going to take, it's, a, it's not a zero-one kind of thing, it's, it's, a, it's over time. The concern that you have raised is one that I frankly share. And I'm not talking about HSBC now, because that, that, that maybe that would not be appropriate. But I am concerned that the size of some of these institutions becomes so large that it does become difficult for us to, um, to prosecute them when we are hit with um, indications that if you do prosecute, if you do bring a criminal charge, uh, it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps even the world economy. And I think that is a function of the fact that some of these institutions have become too large. Tell me a little bit about the last few times you've taken the biggest financial institutions on Wall Street all the way to a trial. Anybody? I appreciate that you say you don't have to bring them to trial. My question is, when did you bring them to trial? 
uh, we have not had to do it as a practical matter to achieve our supervisory goals. Can you identify when you last took the Wall Street banks to trial? Um, I will have to get back to you with the specific information. These are just a few of the real Americans who have dealt with our legal system that is gradually eroding in favor of big business and the government because of tort reform legislation. And this is why we all need to protect a legal system that is designed to protect us and not one that protects corporate business or the government or the common everyday American. Mark Mueller has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Austin, in Texas, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that everyone is treated with equal respect and dignity as guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people become victims, and because of that, he is driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful or negligent actions of others. He has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Austin, Texas. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mark Mueller to the show. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, Steve. Today we're going to be talking about tort reform, but before we get into that, tell our audience a little bit about your law practice and how you have fought against folks that are trying to restrict the rights of individuals. Well, um, I've been doing civil cases after the first three or four years of my practice, which I did criminal cases, um, and I got involved in medical malpractice. I, uh, for many, many years, and that was what I did. I really enjoyed doing it and helping people and people that were significantly hurt. Tort reform killed the whole field. Uh, I say tort reform, the word. You know, what does that mean? Well, it, people think what it means is it's for the better. Reform, how could you be against reform? But really it's, it's, um, it is just purely about money purchasing even more of a rigged game. That's all it is. Um, so the people, the regular people that are getting uh, shafted have no choice. They have no rights. They can't win. That's what it's for. So, gee, if you lose a leg in Texas in a malpractice case, you lose a leg. Uh, your leg loss is two fifty dollars maximum. $250,000. $250,000 for your leg. You know, if that's it. Economic damages, sure, maybe. But, but come on. Amputate part of your body? Amputate all four? Still only a quarter of a million dollars. What's that worth? It's a mess. Anyway, it's just a mess. It's, it's just, the systems are broken. You know, legal system, medical system, political system, educational system. Um, and this is just one more step in the, down the road. Right, and as we talked about prior to the show, um, there is a twofold problem, and that twofold problem is one, uh, our elections and the information that is available to voters is usually always influenced by money. And it is in the best interest of corporations, uh, businesses, that there are restrictions. This isn't tort reform, this is tort restrictions. Right. 
you know, it is to their benefit that they have these laws in place that limit the amount of money that you can rightfully claim when you're injured or or uh, swindled or whatever by these corporations. So let's talk about some of these myths that people hear about all the time. Personal injury claimants and their lawyers clog up the courtrooms. Is that true? That's not true. There are very, very few cases in our system at all involving personal injury and almost no trials. Uh, I think one year in, in Austin, there was maybe two trials, jury trials. We got all the way through in a town of a million people. No, not true. It's businesses fighting each other that clogs the system. Frivolous lawsuits. Now, there are lawyers that do file frivolous lawsuits. What happens to those lawyers who file real genuine frivolous lawsuits worth they go broke yeah it, they, because the cases won't won't let them win they spend and money. eventually they may lose their licenses too right if you do enough of that you're gonna lose your license right so frivolous lawsuits every lawyer's wary of doing it because they don't want to go broke they don't want to lose their license there's always been there's always been a, a remedy for frivolous lawsuits motion for summary judgment right. case is over with if there's no case there at all it's over with that's it. They didn't need any help. What about the myth corporations get hammered in court by outrageous punitive damages awards? Uh, not true. Not, there are very, very seldom punitive damages awarded. When there are punitive damages awarded, they're very seldom collected. They're often reversed on appeal, cut down by the judge, um, or used by the company in their press to, to push against and for more of this limitations. Um, it's propaganda. So the companies themselves will take the big number if it ever gets given and say, look how unfair this is. Oh my gosh, we're getting hit for all this money. Well, you know, why? If a jury does give punitive damages, which is extraordinarily rare. And punitive damages for our audience yeah. is a punishment to the company not to do this to anybody else, right? That's right. Punitive damages are something that is supposed to set an example, and it's for behavior that is in conscious disregard or fraudulent. It's, it's basically almost criminal or criminal behavior. Um, and and that's, why it's, yeah, that's why they're awarded. And they're very seldom given. Very solid given. You know, you used to do medical malpractice cases anymore. Proposition 12 in 2003 kind of killed that because there's limits yes. on what you can recover that are uh, should be recovered on behalf of victims of medical malpractice. Um, the insurance industry promoted the idea that if you had caps on malpractice awards, it would lower the premiums of medical malpractice for doctors. Has that proven to be true over the last 15 years? No. And why not? Because the rates have continued to go up, up, up on the premiums. The coverage levels typically go down. The number of cases are down. And the people that get hurt, now where do they go? It, the, 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 they either have to essentially be, uh, you know, uh, homeless. <laughs> Some of them are homeless, for real. Uh, others are uh, being supported by the taxpayers because they have no insurance. They have no way to recover anything for it. So it's interesting that the, I get calls from doctors sometimes uh, whose wives might have been hurt or killed in a malpractice case themselves. And they're shocked to learn about the limitations affect them too. They thought those were just for frivolous cases and this was not frivolous. They're not for frivolous cases. These are for serious cases. They're about money. They're about money. Um, you handle some product liability cases. Yes. Right? And talk to us about how tort reform has affected the safety of the products that we use. Are basically unregulated. And the, the, the tort reform, so-called tort reform decisions, which limit what you can sue for, and which also have gov sometimes preemption, which just means that some federal um, some federal decision or rule could come into place and, and it wipes out everybody. Um, so basically it's made more and more products unsafe. It's making it harder and harder to sue for everything, including uh, contamination, pesticides, all these things, um, are very trapped in the world of proof, but proof in a way that the companies are trying to make it 
an assault on truth so that people don't know what's going on. They hide documents and they try to confuse. You know, like the tobacco companies in the day, they knew it was bad, they knew it was causing cancer. They had a meeting in New York, the five heads of the tobacco companies, and you probably heard this. And they were talking about, well, guys, the game is kind of up. You know, we, uh, they know, we, we know we sell this stuff. We know it causes cancer. We know it is addictive. We know what we're doing. We know this, all this stuff, so what are we going to do now? And the one executive said, wait a minute. What we really sell is doubt. Okay, where they went to that was, are we really sure we want to give up our freedom to smoke? Are we really sure that the smoking is as bad as they say it is? Because, you know, some people live for a very long time. Maybe it's the other things. So it's this, some experts say that smoking can actually be good for babies. Things like this. So their goal was to make confusion and keep on going for a few more years, make more money, and shift to something else. How has uh, tort reform affected generic drugs? It's making everything more unsafe, and it raises the prices. Well, from my understanding right now, it's very difficult to sue a pharmaceutical company uh, if it's a generic farm, because it's a knockoff of what right. was branded before, but if the, it, it, because the, the uh, patent has expired, if the FDA approved the original brand, you're in the clear. Yeah, that's right. That's called the, uh, the, creeping, the creeping approval process. Right. Yeah, they did the same thing with um, the mesh cases, which I was involved in. Medical devices. There are other, you know, right now it's almost impossible to sue a medical device company, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. Um, nursing homes, we see time and time again all around the country. I know in Florida, nursing homes do not have to carry any insurance at all. So even if you get a, a verdict against one of these nursing homes, it goes bankrupt. Yeah. yeah. So what happened to your relative that died there because they didn't take care of it? Yeah. The end of your life is worthless. The beginning of your life is worthless. Um, and... Nowadays, when a child is born, they're exposed to 150 to 300 chemicals by the time they're born. So they start off that way. Um, right now, we have, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 140 vacant federal judgeships that the Republicans in Congress, namely Mitch McConnell, wanna, want to um, fill with conservative judges. And for our audience, conservative means we don't give a damn about the people. All we care about is protecting our financial interest. How do you see that changing? The, the judge races, the judge appointments um, and the judge elections are one of the trickiest things that we have because the average person doesn't understand what this means. Conservative means like what conservation, that's a good thing, right? Um, law, law and order, um, reasonable following of rules, that's not what it means. It's like the last Supreme Court appointments that came into being, that's all about the money. Uh, you know, Kavanaugh, that wasn't about the sexual stuff, that's because his father was a big well-paid lobbyist for Johnson & Johnson and the, and the, and the uh, you know, cosmetics board, made $13 million keeping the FDA from regulating them. And who was his lawyer? Who was his lawyer during the Kavanaugh's father's lawyer in the FDA things was Justice Roberts. Really? Yes. <laughs> now, how do you like that one? Feel comfortable now? Yeah. Yes. About money. So when we talk about tort reform, let's talk about we all know things need to change. Okay, because what is the value of a lawsuit holding a corporation? Mm -hmm an individual, a company, what's the value of it holding them responsible? And when, I'm gonna address the automobile industry first. Prior to, you and I are of the age where we were before the seat belts. We were before any consumer protection was mandated for cars and vehicles through lawsuits. That's right. So address how lawsuits help. Well, how lawsuits help is it makes it a smart business decision to be safe and to be reasonable. And that's really a good thing. Left to their own, as we've seen over and over again in corporations, left to their own devices, often, not everybody, but often, 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 um, they just think about the money. They don't think about the consequences. And many of these companies, they are making huge profits for two reasons. They don't have to clean up their mess. They don't have to pay for their damages, and they don't pay the right taxes. Those three things. 
And the only way you're going to change that is to, is to have some way as a part of the whole thing is to make them responsible. Otherwise, it's you, you make a factory, you dump it right in the river. Right. Look at our ocean. Why is that the way it is? Okay. Now, who has the right to sue that for that? Who has right? our water, our, 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 our whole food supply our, is contaminated with pesticides. We have an autism rate that's going to be one in two in 30 years. We have diabetes too, out of control because of chemicals and pharmaceuticals. It's not, it's, that's what it primarily is. So when, when we get back to these judges, let's yeah. say you win a big verdict. Let's see. And it goes up on appeal to a conservative judge. I'm not saying all conservative judges yeah. are bad, yeah. but let's talk about your state of Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the highest court in the state of Texas is the Texas State Supreme Court. Yes. Most of the uh, judges on the bench were appointed either by George W. Bush or um, Rick Perry. That's right. So they are 100% business, basically. That's right. And so what you've got is that if you're lucky enough to have a good enough case that you're able to win, get past all the tort reform things, if you're lucky enough to get one that you actually get to a jury and win, okay, it's not easy. Almost 90% of those cases are reversed and taken away completely by the Texas Supreme Court. Gone. And I can tell you that that's the first thing that the, the lawyers will tell you when you have a good case. You'll ne we don't care what you do at trial. You'll never hold it on appeal. We, we own that place. Okay, that's what they say. So when you're evaluating a case, knowing full well what you just said, what is, how, what's your strategy to try and successfully at least settle the case? I asked that same question to somebody else one time and he said, Steve, the good thing is the Texas State Supreme Court can't hear all the cases. That's uppermost in your mind too, isn't it? You, you just have to, you have to, you have to, I mean, it does affect the cases you take. Yeah. It, it does because there's horror stories all the time. A just a complete unjust decisions being made. No, this has nothing to do with following the law. It has to do with taking away the money. So what do you do? You, for, it turns a lot of cases away that are good cases that people need help on. You can't do them. And I hate to say that, you know, but I, it's true. Yeah. It's true because you, you can't go, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't run your car into the, into the concrete, you know, over and over again. And that's what this is like. I don't take malpractice cases in Texas anymore. None. Can't, because I can't help the people anymore. Has tort reform made it more difficult for plaintiff lawyers to bring cases? Totally. And win them? Totally. No, we get, uh, we get knocked out of court before we even get started, even with good cases, all the time. And I used to think that was impossible. I used to think that, you know what, if I have a good case, there's no way that I can get thrown out of court before I get to a trial. And I went years without ever losing a motion on something like that. You could at least get a fact question, you know what I'm talking about. At least let the jury decide, because I don't take bad cases. Well now, in Texas, mm, they find ways that are just like a little razor blade and cut you off and take it away like that. And it's gone. And uh, that's, it's, make no mistake, it's an attack on the lawyers, it's an attack on the people because of money. What do you think, you know, you obviously have, you know defense attorneys, yes. the ones who represent the corporations. Do you ever have a casual conversation with them and saying, you know, this isn't right. This is not what we went to law school for. That's right. Law school is the pursuit of justice. You know, that's why you become a lawyer. And if it's totally unfair, if someone's not given their day in court, quote unquote, you know, day in court, then it's not fair to the judicial system and it's not fair to the individual. What do they have to say about that? You know, most of the ones that I know will agree with me, actually but they're not doing anything about it. Well, you know, this was the, one of the big mistakes that people made was during the medical malpractice tort reform yeah. is that their clients were like, yeah, you've got to help, try to help us out with this tort reform. We love you. You know, we'll still be your, we'll still be your clients. We'll still be this. And guess what? Those lawyers are out of business. Yeah. Those clients don't need them anymore. And 
the system just keeps going on and on. They're out of a job. They, they're out of a job. They use them. They, they eventually use everybody. Yeah. But, but real, you know, you know this conversation. Lawyers, lawyers know the law. And we were supposed to be people that were helping to, regardless of the situation, we were, we were there for the law, for ethics, for integrity. Exactly. And you know, that was an important thing we did. We had a professional responsibility to ourselves and to the system and to our fellow lawyers and to the clients. It was important to us. It, was, it made a difference. A lot of people, and let's talk about like class actions, for example. Let's talk about mandatory arbitration. Mandatory arbitration is almost in every employment agreement today and has taken away the right of trial by jury to millions of people, millions of employees. Um, we can talk about what's been taken away. We can talk about what's restricted, but how do we reverse things so that some of these rights can be given back to the people who are unjustly taken, dealt with? It has to be done by the voting and by the judicial appointments. Um, and we need it because, because it, actually the concept that gets me is the concept of waiver and what it means. So you sign something, do you have, really have a power to not sign it? And there you go, now you, you, you have no power and you'll be under the thumb. And, it, and that's what happens, and that's what happens, another, another topic, but data being used, your data, right? The companies that have apps and, 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 and your information, Facebook and whatever, all these social media things, boom, you click something and next thing you know, They've got you, and by the way, those have arbitration things too, a lot of them. But guess what, people don't realize when they're hitting this or that, that now you've given up seven years of your data for life, you know, for everything. You know, that's another show, but it's, uh, it's, the, invasion, it's the invasion of our rights and our invasion of our privacy with no remedies, broken system. Well, that's why we're doing this show, so we can educate the public, and we're using 21 examples all around the country where people's rights have been taken away, basically, by so-called tort reform. Yeah, people, and, yes. And I want to thank you very much for being on this show. Thank you for having me, yeah. And thank you for doing this. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at insiderexclusive.com.